Hello, this is a tour of simplified Gmail's options. Uh, the way to get to these are if you hover over the profile photo, you can click on the simplify menu and then click on simplify options. You can also click on the extension button if you happen to have that. Maybe you have that pinned or maybe you just click on it here. That will open up a very similar menu which also lets you get to those options. Um, I do have plans to re basically uh, revamp options entirely um, and bring them inside Gmail. Uh, so something like this, where you can pop open an actual menu, see uh, the different options in line and, and play with the options right here in Gmail and see what they do. Uh, to do to get that effect today, you kind of you need to open up options and kind of open it in a separate window. Um, and then as you tweak these, you will see what it does in Gmail behind it if you happen to have those windows side by side. Um, so I'm just going to go through these really quick and kind of show what they do. Um, and then, um, yeah, and hopefully that is helpful. Uh, so the first few options right now have to do with Gmail's new design, um, which if you have access to that, um, that is, uh, you can, you'll see this little option here. You're currently using Gmail's new view, I guess is what they call it. And you can go back. Um, if you don't use chat or spaces, you know, I would probably just go back to the original Gmail until they force you, but eventually they're gonna force you to use this. So right now this account is on uh, the new Gmail. And the first thing I do is I let you show and hide that new app bar over here. Um, I'm gonna find a way to better integrate this. This option may go away at, uh, at some point um, where it's not this kind of buried in Simplify settings where you have to turn on and off, but more can I minimize these and give you access to them um, in some other way without this big bar always being there. Um, the next is, let me move this a little bit, the compose button has always been pulled out of the nav so that when you hide the nav, it can be totally, uh, it can still be seen and I can totally hide the nav. Um, but with the new, um, uh, with the new, um, new Gmail design, I've added an option to leave the compose button in the nav. So now if I open up the nav here, there it is. Um, and if I open the nav, it's right there. Um, so that's another option. Um, and if you really want to be really minimal, you can turn the app bar back on. Um, compose is only inside the, the nav, so you have to open this up to get to compose, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, uh, which is just the letter C. Um, all right, so those are the only two options right now for the new design. Um, next is font. This one definitely confuses some people, it's, and it's to some extent, you know, I, I, I'm trying to be really clever here, but maybe I'm being too clever. I think some people just want to be able to make everything bigger. And to that, I would generally say, if you want to make everything bigger, you can use, can use command plus, uh, command minus to zoom the entire interface um, and simplify in Gmail, handle that really well. You can also do that um, under here, you can zoom, um, et cetera. But sometimes you don't want to zoom the entire interface. Sometimes you just want to modify the text that you see um, uh, whether it's inside of an email thread or it is actually um, here in the inbox. So Simplify gives you some options to change the font size and the font family or font face. Um, and you can also apply the font face to the thread list, but not the font size of today. Um, so I think the default here is, is 14. The default, I think I left is, is Arial, but man, system font to, tends to look really good, especially on Mac. It's It's not a you know, a uh, massive difference, but boy, it looks a lot better. Um, but I'm going to use something, you know, like monospace to really help this stand out um, just for a moment. So you can see as I change this, the font size, it's not actually changing anything. Um, if I start a new message, though, um, let's see if I can type in. So, okay, so there's a bunch of language. Um, so you can see that if I change this, it will actually increase the font size and the font face. Now what's really important to note here with Compose at least, this is not changing what you send. Your message will not be in Georgia size 19. Uh, if you want to change what you're sending, you need to actually use Gmail's formatting options. And if you do use these, Simplify will not overwrite them. Um, I will respect them. I think the font size I still increase relatively, um, but the font face I won't change. Um, so uh, this is just kind of the interface font. This is what you see, 
not what you're sending um, is kind of the important piece to, to note there. Uh, at least if I can find safe. Um, I don't modify HTML emails. So this one is an example of an HTML email, um, which has its own formatting and stuff. So I don't modify the size or the font face on that. And that's one place where it confuses some people. It's like, I've changed in this and it's not changing anything. It might be that the email is deemed to be or uh, thought to be by as an HTML email by uh, Simplify. Um, and sometimes emails from like Outlook, I, I continue to try to improve on this. Sometimes there's there's kind of a gray area where the email is mostly just plain text, but whatever the email client, uh, the person sent the message with, added a lot of formatting. Um, and you can even end up that way in Gmail itself. Um, one of my favorite, well, not favorite, but uh, least favorite, um, is anybody who's played with this right here will add, uh, it's easy to kind of get into a state where you're accidentally formatting the emails you're sending with Gmail. Um, and so I, um, I've had a, a number of people have issues and then those issues went away when they came in here and cleared the formatting. Um, so like, I think if I come in here and say, not that, if I change this to normal, if I actually select normal and hit save, um, that will look the same, but it actually forces a font size. It's complicated, uh, but anyways, you don't want to apply any extra formatting. Uh, let's see if I can find, I was trying to find an example of a, I don't want to show anybody's email address here. Um, I might just have to send myself an email. Um, see how well prepared I am for this. Let's do from... Well, anyways, uh, it changes the font size. I will, let me, um, here, uh, is there a way to, I don't know, let's keep going. Um, but this applies to the conversation as well. Um, there's got to be something from, uh, I know what I can do from, I know it's, uh, let's see, is there a plain old, yeah, there we go, perfect. Wonderful, an email with myself. Um, okay, so I can expand this and you can see that the font size and the font face are applied to the conversation as well. I think I also apply it to some things like the sender and, uh, and the recipient and a few other things. Um, so you can come in here and I can reply. And now I see it. my interface is a monospace font. When I actually send that message though, this is a reply. And then I change this, I go, I, I uh, well, there's a couple things you can do. One is you can always turn Simplify on and off. You can toggle it on and off. You can just come in here and say, turn off, Simplify. You can also use a keyboard shortcut of Option S or Alt S um, on Windows. So you can see that that email was not actually sent in monospace. It's just a, a normal message. Um, all right, so go back. Let's put that back at system. 14, that's how I like it. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Conversation list. Uh, so let's go back to the conversation list. Uh, actually, while we've got this thread here, let's do some stuff on message view and we'll come back to conversation list. Uh, so the first is you can change the width of the view. Of the view. Um, and these are independent. You can also change the width of the conversation list as well. Um, so I can say I want this to actually be wider and you'll see that that will get wider and so forth. Um, and you can also just say full screen, you know, don't limit this, take up as much space as available. Uh, if the nav is open, it'll shrink, obviously. Um, I, I like narrow because shorter line links, the whole reason this is in here is shorter line links. This is actually the very first thing I even built with Simplify uh, is it's a lot easier to read long emails. So if I did reply to this and said, uh, let's send that long. It's much easier to read this here than if I turn off Simplify and these line links get really long. Um, the other thing I do is there's a lot that goes into having images not be extra wide. So if an image is inlined and it was a really large image, these lines can actually cause a lot of horizontal scrolling. So Simplify fixes that too and puts a max size on images. Um, all right, so that's the width. Uh, hide message number. So there is an actual message count up here, which you can, it always shows on hover, but if you want, you can say hide that until I hover. Uh, so, or I can just have it to be always shown. 
Um, I don't really care what message number I'm on very often. If I really care, it's because I'm going between messages and I can hover up there. So I think that's hidden by default, but I'm not sure. Hiding email signatures. This is this is a Gmail. Uh, so Google Inbox. This is I was the co-founder of Google Inbox, um, and one of the things I did um, we did was we tried to uh, minimize email signatures. Um, so Gmail still the text email signature is kind of as a relic of Google Inbox. Gmail itself just doesn't do anything with it. So I'm able to uh, because I mean detecting in signatures is no easy task. It's not something Simplify does all on its own. Um, it's just making use of what Gmail is doing, but not making use of itself. So if I turn that on, and there is a signature, um, so let's say, let's see if I can cause this to happen. I don't know if I'm going to be able to have, get this to happen. Hello, this is apply. Now, often signatures, uh, Michael, simplify uh, Gmail, Seattle, Washington. Often are kind of this double hash. Uh, Let's see. So I don't know if Gmail is going to think that's a signature or not. Uh, if we could leave it and go back. Yeah, I don't think it does. But when it does, what it'll do is it'll actually hide it behind one of these little dot, dot, dots. So it's the same dot, dot, dot they use for quoted text. Um, it'll just hide signatures that way. Uh, I don't have an example queued up here. But um, sometimes, very rarely will I see that actually hide real content. So more often, I'll see signatures that aren't hidden. Um, so I think it's a pretty safe feature to turn on. I don't think I have it on by default just because I want to be really careful to not hide people's you know, content without them kind of opting into it. But that's what that um, feature does is it just minimizes a signature behind a dot, dot, dot. I really like that one. Um, reverse order messages in all conversations. So some people really like the conversation to be newest to oldest. They want the newest on top. There's actually a keyboard shortcut. Um, it's Alt D or Option D on Mac that I might have that one turned off. Let me come down here. Yep, I have it turned off. All right, we'll come back to keyboard shortcuts in a sec. Um, so you can do that on a one off basis. So now look, that message I just sent, here it is at the top. And then the next newest message is there. Um, I've always find this to be found this to be like, yes, the newest message is at the top. That's lovely. But usually when I come in here, so if I unflip uh, this, there's the first message. Usually these messages are, are shrunk. Um, and I can very quickly, well, actually this is an interesting example. It's because I searched for messages from this that it's actually expanding all these other threads. So these are all matching uh, my search, and so it's expanding them. Usually this would be super minimized, and it would say like, you know, eight messages or something. Um, so I don't really find this to be that bad. And also if it's a longer thread or if a couple of new messages have come in, it's really easy to always have context and read, you know, from top to bottom. Uh, when you reverse this, you're kind of reading, well, if I have to read multiple messages in a row, I might have to come, you know, down here, read this and then scroll up and then I'm scrolling down to read and then I scroll up and then I scroll down to read and on and on. So I'm not a big fan of this, but some people really like, uh, reverse sorting this, um, so there's a keyboard shortcut for doing that uh, back and forth. What this option is that we skipped past uh, is you can just turn it on to always do that by default. And then you can use the same keyboard shortcut to undo it um, if you want. Uh, again, that's Option D or Alt D uh, for direction. Um, all right, so that's what that is. Uh, suppress external recipient warnings. If you are using, and, and I am in this case, um, so I have this set to mostly, you can change it back to don't suppress. So don't suppress will show, you saw this little tag up here will show up. That's not actually a label, it's just a tag. And then if I hit reply, um, I think it's because they're in my contacts, they're not showing the warning. Let's, let's un, whoops. Uh, sure, we can opt and turn off, simplify off entirely if we want. Or maybe it's because Okay, that's from, let's go back to this one and hit reply. Well, you see that this will be colored in yellow. And then there also is typically this big bar that shows up, um, whoops, which is not showing up here. Um, so fantastic, uh, <laughs> wonderful example. Well, anyways, that's what the feature is for is there's this big yellow bar that shows up 
um, if you're in a Google Workspace account. Um, I think because this address is in my contacts, it's maybe not showing that bar. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I have the options to mostly suppress it. Um, so it hides this little label. Um, it hides the bar, but it leaves the address still in yellow. Um, so you can kind of still see that, oh, I'm responding to someone uh, that's not on my domain. Um, so mostly we'll hide. Well, I gotta turn Simplify back on. All right. so. Mostly we'll hide that, and I think completely, yep, so now it's not even yellow anymore. Uh, that's what that is. So I think mostly is default. I think that's fine. I think the yellow is not really that annoying. Um, it's a good reminder. But if you really want to totally hide it, I do let you do that. All right, so that's in conversation view. Um, let's go. We did touch on that reversing. We talked about that really quick. So reversing the messages, that's only inside conversation view. The keyboard shortcut, though, when you're up here, you can use that and reverse the threads. And so now the threads are, let me go back to like my inbox here, um, are oldest to newest, see February 27th down to today. This is for uh, this page though, is really important to notice or to note. And that's part of why there's no option to have this be the default is because I can only reverse sort what I can see. And this is a general rule for Simplify. I can only change what I can see. I don't have total access to your email. I can't see beyond the current page. I can't see other pages until you go there. So there's no way for me to take all of the threads in your inbox and reverse sort them. You'd have to actually go to the last page if you wanted to start with the oldest message in your inbox. Um, so uh, you can use that shortcut to temporarily you know, resort. Um, but there's no option currently to have that be the default because, again, I don't think it's a great experience. The other problem with this is, um, let's see here, let me put focus here. Um, I'm gonna have to think really hard. So I'm pressing up and it's going down. And that's because Gmail doesn't know, like I can't tell Gmail I've changed the order of things. So up, down or JK, um, still work. Uh, so here now I'm pressing down and it's going down, up goes up, works, makes sense. Um, when I reverse sort it, um, they also go in the opposite directions, which is really unintuitive. Now the good news is I actually am, I'm, I'm basically totally, um, I'm building a replacement for up down for bundles, which is in the V3 beta, um, which I might touch on in this video. It's already getting really long. Um, but um, I think I can fix this. I think that I can get it to where you can reverse sort the page and have down go down, up go up. Um, but for now, they go in opposite directions. It's confusing, and that's why there's no option to have that be on by default. Um, all right, let's keep going. So that's that's that. Um, let's let's go back to the thread list. So conversation list. So you can change the width. You can make it wider. Oh, lovely. It didn't. Uh, now it's getting wider. I don't know why. Well, I might have found a bug. Uh, I'll have to look into why. Or, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. Okay, so that, that should be doing something. Um, 960 should be making it smaller. Uh, but certainly you can see as you get larger, it does get bigger. Um, and you can get all the way to full screen. Um, I'll have to figure out why the 960 is apparently not working. Um, message layout and side-by-side -side reading pane. Uh, okay, this is a fun one. Um, so in reading pane, your conversations will eventually go from three lines to one line. And usually it'll keep, it'll stay whatever you've got it on, whatever the width you've selected. But as you make the window larger, it'll actually it will proportionately make this left pane wider. And so if you use different window sizes and you reload Gmail, different things, sometimes this was jumping from some people and some people really just wanna always have it be uh, three lines or some people always want it to be one line. So this option lets you say like, look, don't automatically switch, just always keep it at three lines. And really all I'm doing there is saying, never let this be wider than the width where Gmail switches or always be one line. Now there's a minimum width, I can't really make it less wide uh, than that. Um, so you can make it wider, but not less wide. Uh, and same with here, I can make this wider, but eventually it's gonna max out or I can make it 
smaller. Uh, so that's all, that's all that that does. Um, automatic is fine. Uh, inbox zero, this is another one that really trips up people. Um, and this is gonna be difficult because my inbox is not at zero. Uh, how am I gonna show that? Well, I'll just explain it. Um, actually, I know I can show it. So you can hide the inbox. Uh, let's not do that with Alex Lovely. Um, so, uh, and I'll, I'll get back to hiding the inbox. But we'll talk about that later. Um, so when the theme is the default theme, it only works for two themes. This is really, well, let's see. The backgrounds only work for two themes. They work for the default theme and they work for the dark theme. This is the default theme, this is the dark theme. Those are the only two themes that the background images work for today. Uh, eventually I wanna make it work for these other image themes as well. But currently if you have a background, so let's say I go and have this background and your inbox is empty, I assume you like that background and I just let you see that background. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna change the background. Um, and maybe someday I'll, I'll add the option. Maybe some people like, oh, I want a different background as a reward, or maybe I want a random background or uh, other things. But for now, it just shows the background of your theme um, and tries to kind of hide everything else when it detects there's a zero inbox. The one that does work across themes is the illustration. So, and this one, let's see what happens. I don't think the illustration, whoops, nope. I don't think the illustration works with hiding the inbox. So it doesn't. Okay, so if your inbox was empty, there'd be a big illustration in the middle here, and that works across several themes. So I think that the illustration is the default. Um, and I think partly for that reason that it works across more themes. If you change the background, it will work if you're using the default or the dark theme. Um, yeah, and that's that's that. And eventually, hopefully I'll add more options or maybe the ability to up, you know, use your own or other wonderful things. Let's unhide the inbox. Um, next one, and then let's invert, is group email by date. Um, this is pretty simple. It will group your email by date. Um, and so there is a group for today, I think it is currently unlabeled. Yesterday, uh, earlier this week, uh, you know, this month, and then it'll eventually get into last month, I think should be the next one. Uh, yeah, last month. And it'll go back a couple months. It'll go, it'll say, you know, uh, if I keep going here, it should say January at some point. Let's see where we go. Uh, oh, I didn't get far enough. Yep, January. Uh, and I think it'll go to December. I can't remember if it goes back two or three months. Let's see. It's December. But eventually it just says older. Yeah, earlier. So anything beyond a couple months, it's just saying, look, it's it's earlier. Some people have asked, hey, can you keep grouping beyond that first? Um, or you know, can you group into smaller chunks? Um, so I think that there's there's some things I could I could possibly keep doing that. Um, uh, so, but that's how that works today. You can turn that on and off. Um, I love it if I'm not using the section inbox, um, but if I'm using like a priority inbox or some of the other section inbox, I tend to actually turn it off just because I've already got some grouping by some other something other than date. Um, but I believe that is on by default. Um, hide inbox tab icons. Okay, so what are the inbox tabs? So if you go in and you change your inbox type, so let's say, our, well, I'm just gonna add some tabs. Okay, so now I have tabs. Um, this is the option to hide the icons on those tabs, so just to make those a bit simpler. Um, so what that is, uh, hide, select, and refresh until hover. I, I love this setting. Um, it just hides uh, these little options until you hover over them. Um, or if you select a message, the actions will show up. Um, but it's just yet another way to kind of further simplify uh, your inbox. Um, that's what that does. Same thing with um, hiding the message count here in the list. It's similar to the one we showed earlier in the message view. Um, you can have that hidden until you hover over it. Um, or you can have that always visible if you want. Um, so hide those two things and everything's a bit simpler. Right align labels after snippet. Okay, so I gotta find me some labels. Uh, there's a label. So all this does is it pushes this the label, uh, let me move this over here a little bit, to the right after the snippet. Um, and I think if you're using reading pane, um, it, 
puts it at the end of the thread. Yeah, so let's see what it, if it does anything. No, it doesn't really seem like it does anything. Um, so I think it's it's mostly if you're you're using um, if you if you do have it expanded, it's putting it to the left or the right. Um, I've grown to like this at the right. Uh, honestly, I, I I don't know. This is a I think there's a totally reasonable if you're applying labels with filters, those labels might help you kind of identify, you know, kind of as you're scanning down your inbox. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've I've grown to kind of like just having them off to the right. Um, hide empty sections in multiple inboxes. So if you use multiple inboxes, which is another inbox type down here, um, and currently um, if you're using like one of these inbox, if you're using this is what I call the section inbox, these are all different versions of priority inbox. Priority inbox just let you fully customize what these sections are, uh, but there's important first, unread first, or starred first. Um, they have the option to hide sections when they're empty. So uh, let's do starred first. I can come under here and I can say hide this section when empty. And if there's no mail here, it'll be hidden. Multiple inboxes does not let you do that. So this is just my adding that option, basically. If you have multiple inboxes, when they're empty, I can hide them. Um, hide filter chips. All right, filter chips is what I call, uh, okay, so in labels. So let's go to, uh, I think you'll see this in just about anything now. Do I, am I hiding them? Yeah, not, okay. And there's some issues here. I, I've got this on my list of things to, to dig into and fix. So this is what I'm calling the filter chips. These used to only be shown on search, I think, or maybe they've always been in all views. Um, but certainly if I search, um, they will show up and see, look, now they're not overlapping in a weird way. Um, so this is just a search. I'm no longer in the spam folder because as soon as you're doing any, any adding anything to that, um, you'll see that spam is not highlighted and not in spam. Um, so you can opt to hide them in search uh, and independently, you can opt to hide or show them not in search. Um, so if I do go back to the spam folder, they're still there until I say I don't really want them there either. So this will hide them across all labels. This is your user labels. This is the system labels. Um, they aren't shown in the inbox by default, uh, but they are. you can see them elsewhere. Um, so if you never use them, you don't like them, you can just hide them. Uh, but if you do like them in one or the other, you can opt to show them. Um, hide the inbox on initial load. This just means if you turn that on and then I refresh Gmail, uh, and I actually have to go back to the inbox. Uh, that was a good job there. Um, it will default to a hidden inbox. Um, so yeah, inbox hiding is its own kind of uh, option here. Oh, that's, oh, that's another bug uh, with the new design. So let's go back to the old design. All right, so uh, when the inbox is hidden, I show the toggle. Um, there's also some options in here to hide the defaults. One of the few places I have integrated Simplify options. Um, you also have the option of toggling uh, with um, Alt H. Uh, and then you also have the option to disable notifications. So if you do use desktop notifications, which I think are under here or somewhere, um, you can actually opt to disable them. If you do that, I need an extra um, permission. So if I don't have that permission, it's gonna pop this up and say, hey, I'm happy to disable desktop notifications and you've hidden the inbox, give you like real focus so you can go work on you know, your starred messages or other things or writing email, um, that's great. But I'm gonna need this extra setting. Um, so you have to click continue and then it's gonna say, oh, can you give it the setting, allow. And now you'll see when I've turned that on, it should say notifications are off. And if I unhide the inbox, notifications are back on. Uh, so that is what uh, that, that feature is. Um, okay, so you can opt to say like, when I load up my inbox in the morning, I don't wanna see it. So hide it by default and then I'll turn it on when I'm ready. Um, all right, so we already went through message view. Compose, uh, we are just moving at a snail's pace here. <laughs> Compose is all about here. Uh, so let's get some content in there again. Um, uh, the first thing is there's a really there's some good Gmail settings that so one of my favorites that people often don't know about. So you can click that button and then compose is is a lot larger. Um, 
you can actually have Compose default to that size. So you come under here, you click on this button, and you say default to full screen. And now, next time I hit Compose, it will default to a full screen. Um, so close that again. Uh, and you can always click outside of it, and it'll just shrink. You open it back up, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that's a, a nice little Gmail setting. Uh, you don't need to use Simplify to, to, to use that. Um, but I, I'm fine with um, the moles. I find this is, is nice. This works for me. Okay, so uh, the first is only show some Compose actions. So this is what I'm calling the Compose actions down here. Um, so if I turn this off, um, well, that's weird. Oh, there they are. Now you see all of them. See all of your lovely icons. Um, so if you turn it back on, it just hides whichever ones you want to hide. Um, so I often actually hide all of them. I don't let you hide the attachment button. That's a pretty useful one. Um, and then the formatting button is separate. So only show some formatting options. Um, this is a little awkwardly written. So this bar here, what I find is I only use a few of these. And so I'd love to have the ones I do use be over here in this lovely chunk of white space instead of having to open and close this silly bar. So that's what this does. Uh, so only show some formatting options. I'm gonna click that. The formatting bar is now gone. You can't access the ones you aren't electing to hide, uh, show. And then you can open up in here um, and decide which ones you want to actually be able to see. Um, I think, oh there, oh, interesting undo. That did not show up. So yeah, there's another interesting bug. Undo redo should, should show up. Um, so font, font size, uh, color, uh, alignment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I usually have like, these are the, the couple that I can have a hard time remembering the shortcuts for. Um, and then remove formatting. Oh, where's that guy? He should absolutely be there. That's a useful one. Uh, let's try that. There it is. So sometimes changing those, let's go back and try the undo, redo. See if that comes back too. Nope. All right. So undo redo has still got some kind of bug. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of get it to be wh uh, whatever it is that you like and just shows those actions and you always have um, access to them. You still have access to the actions. Whenever you expand the actions, I hide the formatting until you recollapse that uh, just so those don't bump into each other. Uh, okay. So that's what formatting is. Show schedule send. Um, this should totally be on by default now because I've revamped this. This used to be kind of a little buggy, so it's off by default, but now it's actually pretty good. All I'm doing is there's like other extensions that will let you schedule an email to be sent at a later date. It's a great feature. Gmail has this. It's just hidden under this button here. It's the only item in this menu. It seems really strange to me. Uh, so this is just the option to say like, I don't need that menu. Just show me the button. Um, the way this works, though, uh, silly enough, is when you do click it, it will just show the menu, and then you have to click on that. Um, but that's what that is. That's a great one. Um, use HTTPS when linkifying a naked domain. So this is a little strange, but what this means is if I type google.com, and then you highlight over it, and you hit Command-K, it'll turn into a link. And you'll notice here it says HTTP. It's not the HTTPS. Um, and so this is like a really small detail, but something that's kind of always bothered me is, well, typically I actually want to link to HTTPS. Certainly what I'll often do is type SIMP.FYI, um, and that's not going to automatically turn into a link when I hit send. So I want to turn it into a link, ah, but it's not a secure link, and I'd really like it to be. So all this is is if you have that enabled, when you do select, when you highlight a link and hit Command-K, it will make it HTTPS. Um, so Google com command k https uh, so that's all that is navigation um all right so let's think we're done with compose um navigation um okay so hide unread count so if you don't want to see all these unread counts you can hide them um i think if you're on them no, I just think I hide them entirely. Um, hide mail section title. Like this, like I, I'm not going to zip up mail. Uh, so I just thought this was kind of unnecessary. In the new Gmail design, this title isn't there. So it's not, this setting won't do anything if you have the new Gmail design. But all that does is just hide the top title. 
Um, add purchases, finance, and travel categories. This is a, another one that is awfully, often confusing to people. Um, so this will not add it to, let's see. So uh, I think I've, um, let's go back here to have a couple of sections turned on. Okay, so these are categories. So Gmail automatically categorizes your email, right? And Inbox actually had a few more categories. Um, so let's go back and let's turn on updates too. Uh, Gmail used to have uh, finance, uh, purchases, and travel were three other categories they had. Now they're actually still categorizing the mail in these ways. So if I say um, category, um, uh, travel. I don't know if I have any travel mail. I don't have any travel mail in this account. Uh, maybe purchases. Okay, I have some purchases. Um, so this is me actually buying Simplify for myself. Um, I am a paying customer. <laughs> um, uh, so they still apply these categories, but they don't show them under here under the categories. So all this setting is doing is saying, I want to show them under this finance, purchases, travel. Um, and all that's doing is actually linking to that saved search. That means you can't go into the inbox and say, oh, well, this is also a purchase. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna apply, well, I have updates and forums, where is where's purchases? Well, you can't actually apply it. Now there is a workaround and I, I haven't found a way to automate this. So I haven't published anything about this. Um, there is a workaround and it's complicated. Um, so if, if you I hesitate to kind of get into it, but basically it involves categories are applied before labels. So you can't actually filter off of a category. So what you can do is you can say, uh, you can do a search for uh, category purchases. Um, and then you can actually build a filter off of this. So I can say, create a filter, um, oops. You have to, I guess I have to come in here and say, has the words. Um, and then I can apply a label and I can make up my own label called finance. So basically what you can do is you can, and then you also want to say, don't categorize it as any, because what they basically Gmail did is they bundled purchases, um, finance and travel all into the updates. So uh, I, I basically say, apply a label. So I would create a new label. This is purchases. So I might say, um, you know, receipts, for instance. So I'm going to apply my own label, receipts. I'm going to categorize it back as primary, and then I'll obviously apply that to anything. Uh, and if you have a lot of mail that matches this, it could take a while, uh, and you want to be patient with it. And what that's going to do is basically reproduce this category as an editable label. And now I can move stuff in and out of that label. Um, so there is a way to do it. Uh, I'm not going to do it on this account right now, um, but there you have it. I can go delete this email too. Uh, remove label. Yeah. Okay. So that's what that is. Um, but right now, all it really does is it adds those links to the left nav. That's what this option does. Chat. Some of these only work with the Hangouts, not with Google Chat. Um, I thought I had a disclaimer in here, but I, apparently I don't. So minimize chat roster to floating button. Hey, where's the floating button? Um, if I happen to go, I don't know if I even can under chat. Yeah, I just have the option of turning it on and off. So in this account, I can't even get back to Hangouts. Hangouts is going away. So this, this feature, I either need to upgrade the new chat to work in this way, but it used to be that similarly to Compose being in a button, I put the entire chat roster down in a button into a fab. Uh, so that really doesn't do anything right now. Show chat button when nav is closed. This is the same, you know, when that when the nav was closed, there was the option to have chat be available. Um, so I'd love to bring this stuff back uh, with the new design, but these don't really do anything because unless you're using Google Hangouts, which is increasingly not the option. All right, when using dark theme. So my answer for dark mode, and I do have plans to revamp dark mode and have it automatically switch, you know, when your system switches and lots of great stuff. So the way this works now, and, and the reason I keep opening up themes this is another small um, thing here, uh, is that when you change the theme right here, it doesn't always apply. There's like a Gmail bug, and it's really weird. So I like to click View All and change my theme this way. So 
If you're using Gmail's dark theme, I give you some options. One of them is make the messages dark too. So the default is uh, if I open up a message, so this goes back to find a message to open up. Um, it's on white. Uh, I can see that we're still inverting the order. Let's go back and turn that off. Okay. Uh, so it's white. So if you want, you can actually say, you know, go ahead and make the message dark too. And it'll do that if it's a text email. You can also do that for all emails, which will mean also for HTML emails. Um, and I'll try to, you know, do that wisely. Sometimes weird things happen if you do it for all messages. So um, buyer beware. Um, similarly, you can make the add-ons dark. So let's open up something like tasks. So now tasks is dark. Uh, if I turn that off, it will be whatever the default, it will be the default brightness. Um, and make compose dark. This one is, is super tricky. This seems to be uh, the bane of my existence, honestly. Um, so there, compose is dark, isn't that lovely? Um, and this mostly works. Um, if you use another extension, like Grammarly seems to cause this a lot. Sometimes it'll be like weird flickering. Um, so this will not, again, this isn't going to send a message. You know, so if I sent this to um, I don't simplify um, hello and sent that. And then I went into my, uh, let's go back to the to there it is. So if I turn off simplify, you'll notice like this is not formatting what you're sending. Again, this is all just changing what your interface is. Uh, so there's a lovely uh, dark email. So that's what dark mode lets you do. If you're using Gmail's dark theme, you can make compose dark. Uh, you can choose which emails you want to make dark. You can make add-ons dark. All right, we're near the end. <laughs> so the last is, I think this is really the this is really the end. There's a couple other miscellaneous ones. I guess there's a couple other crazies. A lot of keyboard shortcuts. So I, these are almost all on by default, except the uh, reverse, partly because that's that's kind of a weird one. And also, I, I think this conflicts with um, a Chrome shortcut. I think that this is another a backup shortcut for focusing that address bar, maybe. I don't know. So for some reason, I have that one off by default. Um, but most of these are... Uh, and you can actually see all of these if you hit the question mark key. So I hit shift question. Um, these are all the keyboard shortcuts that simplify ads up here at the top. Um, and then these are all of Gmail's keyboard shortcuts. And if you don't use Gmail's shortcuts, I highly recommend it. They're great. Um, and I make it pretty easy to read this. Um, you can, they will probably, if they're off, this will be red. And what that means is all of these are on still, but everything below this bar is off until you turn them on. So turn that on. Um, but these are the ones that simplify ads and I let you turn any of these off and wouldn't it be great to be able to either modify these or turn them off and on right here yes I agree and at some point I will have that as, as settings gets better integrated for now it's it's separate it's over here is what it is um, most of these I think are pretty intuitive like you know up down older newer conversation that only works in list view command R will actually refresh the list so I I, I steal, I basically am just clicking on this refresh button. Um, so instead of refreshing the whole tab, which is what would happen otherwise, um, I just refresh the list, which is really all you almost ever need. You can still hold, the, you can still click on the browser refresh button. Um, Command A to select all. Um, so this is a great one. Let's do this again. Uh, and yeah, there's multiple lists, great. So Command A will uh, select everything and unselect everything. It's great. Uh, let's hide that. Let's hide the search tabs for now. Uh, message conversation view, hide filters, please. Yes, thank you. Ah, much better. All right, so select all, select none. Um, man, it looks like there's something weird happening in dark view there with the, that line. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, let's also go back to the normal theme. Huh, interesting. Well, have to look into that. Something's changed. The Gmail is always changing. This is the, the life of working on Simplify is constantly trying to keep up with, with things as it changes out from under me, but that line shouldn't be there. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, what you can do, though, is when you select all, there's this option to select all the conversations that match the search. So what that means is I want you to select not just everything on this page. I want you to select everything across pages. 
So you can click on this button, but Simplify actually gives you a shortcut to, if you, you know, so you command shift A, will select everything. So now I just select it all, and then I went ahead and selected on that, all conversations that match are selected. Uh, so that's that's what those two set, those two shortcuts are. Uh, all right, what else do we have? Um, uh, enter to drill into a conversation. So this is up, down, enter, open up. Escape will close. Escape will close. See, isn't that wonderful? What's going on there? Huh. All right, well, there's another start going back and figuring out uh, what all is going on. Escape should close. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, so enter is supposed to kind of drill in uh, is the idea. So if I hit enter, we'll open up the conversation and then enter again. We'll reply to the last message in the thread. Um, and then you can also hit command enter test uh, and that will send the message. Um, escape will close or should close, but it's, it's not working for some reason. Let me try just refreshing. There it goes. See, sometimes you just got to reload. All right. So uh, enter will open, enter will reply, escape will close. It'll actually defocus. And I think if you didn't write anything, it will actually throw away the draft. So if I hit escape twice. So um, and, and really, I should just be able to detect that that's empty and go straight to going back. So that should probably be better. But anyways, that's what the inner and escape are. Drill in and drill out. That's what those are meant to do. Um, backspace is delete the key. And this works on both the delete key if you have a delete. So I can delete. Um, ah, but oh, this is a great one. Okay, perfect. So you'll notice... I'm hitting backspace and nothing's happening. And it's giving me this error that says no conversation selected. So the way Gmail shortcuts work is a lot of these are one key. Uh, so let me go down here. So E to archive um, and uh, hash to delete. So that's actually shift three on an American keyboard or exclamation point to report spam. So there are these one key shortcuts, R to reply, um, A to reply all. And so because they're one key, they don't work until you select a message. So if I select the message and now I hit backspace, it will delete it. So that is, but there is an option in Simplify to what I call auto select. So come down here, auto select messages in list for one key shortcuts. Um, and this doesn't work for custom shortcuts. There's an option to modify the Gmail shortcuts that's in an advance. So now I don't have to select the message. Um, I can just go up there and hit delete, uh, and then that should come back. There it is. Um, yeah, so can I hide that? No, I can't hide that. Um, yeah, so that's, that's great. I, I think this is nice for kind of being able to use your shortcuts without having to select a message. If you do have a message selected, so let's say I've selected these two and then I've moved focus down here, I'm not going to automatically select that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm going to say, oh, there's stuff selected. I will just delete that stuff. So let's see if the shortwave email gets deleted. It did not. Okay. Uh, refresh and those will come back. All right. Um, what else? So uh, space to select, unselect. So if you do want to go through and select a bunch of things, you can just hit the space bar. Um, that's nice. Uh, Gmail has the shortcut is X, which is kind of weird. Space bar is nice and Easy to remember, big key. Um, and then my favorite is, and I don't know if this is actually written out. Oh yeah, so shift up down. Um, so if you hold the shift key, just like you can in like any file browser, you can actually select multiple. So and you can unselect too. So shift down, shift up, uh, shift down, and then I can actually release and then move my focus down and then come down here and select some more, shift down some more, shift down. I can come back up here and unselect those somehow. Uh, uh, there it goes. Should do the inverse of whatever the first one is. Uh, so that's great too. So you can select one or you can hold down the shift key and go up down and select multiple. Um, I think this also works with J and K if you're really used to using JK. Yeah, it does. Um, I just don't advertise it as that. We already talked about select all, select all, all. 
uh, refresh, um, undo. This is a great one. Um, if you have, if you go and delete a bunch of stuff, so let's say I didn't mean to delete this. Um, Gmail does have a keyboard shortcut Z for undoing. But the thing is, these shortcuts are not on by default. So almost nobody has these shortcuts enabled. Um, and Z is, is down here under one of those. So there is no shortcut for undo. Uh, now, obviously you can click undo right here, uh, but uh, for someone who likes keyboard shortcuts, like command Z is like, so like wired into my brain. Um, so um, I have support for that. So you can hit command Z and that will undo it as well. Uh, command P for printing, uh, you know, I don't know why, but sure, why not? Uh, so if you want to print the conversation, um, this will, instead of trying to print Gmail's interface, this will actually click on this button here that opens up a nice print view. Um, so this is just a lot nicer. Uh, so instead of, because uh, I think if you go up here and I say, if I say file print, I think this is going to look, yeah, it's going to look awful. It's actually going to try to print Gmail's interface. You do not want to use file print or command P. So use the print view. So command P opens that up. Um, unarchive um, will move it back to the inbox, essentially. Um, I should probably just call it that. Yeah, add to inbox. Um, so E is to archive, shift E on archives. Uh, so that's now in the ar in the inbox. So I can hit E to archive, shift E to unarchive, E to archive, shift E to unarchive. And you can see the little inbox label over here going away as I do that and then coming back as I unarchive. Um, Okay, open and close the menu. Um, so this is uh, option M. We'll open and close the nav. And when I open it, I actually put keyboard for focus over here. Um, so you can actually just click up, down, um, and go hit enter, and then close the menu. So option me to open, option M to open, option M to close. But when it does open, it, the keyboard focus is placed over there. Um, Simplify version and info pop up. This isn't super useful, but it does get you to reporting an issue, which is nice. Um, when you report an issue this way, I get uh, information about kind of uh, how you've configured Simplify, which is really useful, as well as some basic info about your browser. Oh man, uh, show hide inbox, option H. I should have just done the keyboard shortcuts. It's its own thing. Um, so you can show and hide the inbox. It only works on the inbox, obviously. Uh, we already talked about reversing. Uh, and then finally, turning Simplify on and off, uh, which is really useful sometimes um, if you're in a bind. Uh, so you can always just turn off, uh, turn uh, Simplify off and see what Gmail looks like uh, without Simplify. Or maybe you're trying to access a feature or maybe Simplify broke in some way. Uh, so you can do that, that works great. Um, the last few things, so use solid color Gmail at Favicon. So if you turn that off, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of Gmail's favicon, this multicolored thing. And I really don't like when I've got multiple accounts, they all have the same favicon. So I've got multiple accounts pinned, I can't tell them apart. So what this does is it goes back to kind of the classic Gmail favicon. Um, and then I've got a bunch of different colors. So start with red just means on account zero. So you can see this U slash one, that's account one. Uh, account zero, I think it's my personal account. Um, um, and so if, um, where's it going with that? Uh, yeah, so this just says what color to start with. Uh, so if I say start with green, I think I might have to refresh Gmail to really get that to apply. This will be something other than green. It'll be whatever comes after green, which is purple. Um, so start with red is, is fine. Um, show add-ons tray. Oh, some people, so the add-ons tray is over here. And some people are like, look, man, I never use this. And some people are like, I use this all the time. So eventually I added a feature to say, always show it, in which case it should always show it. Maybe I have to refresh. Oh, looks like that one is broken. It's interesting. Oh, you know what's going on? I bet you anything. Maybe let's, let's I wonder if the setting, I don't think that's it. Uh, but sometimes these get disconnected. So let's come down here. Yeah, on hover, never. So never will not show it ever. And then always doesn't work. All right, well, there's a bug. 
Um, so I should go back and fix that. Um, okay, finally, the last two. We're almost at the end. Dear Lord. Modify page title. Um, uh, okay, so this is the actual title up here in the bar. Um, so if you want, you can say, don't show the unread count. Uh, let's see if I had some unread messages in here. Um, there's now going to say one. So you can actually say hide the unread count. So that'll hide that. Or you can say hide the account name. That should actually still show the unread count. Uh, I think if I refresh, it will show the unread count. Yeah, there it is. Um, or I can say hide unread count and the account name, at which point it's just going to say uh, what is the, um, what, what label I'm on, so inbox or a label or a search. Um, I find that this thing tends to sometimes break, like Gmail refreshes the title quite often, and so I try to catch that, but I also don't want to be like overly polling and cause performance issues. So I'm a little bit you know cautious in here so that I'm not causing any performance issues, and I, I do this across all of Simplify. Um, and so I find sometimes this will revert, and then it will revert back. Um, so it's not perfect, but I try to do the best I can. And then finally, debug mode. This is off by default. It's fine to have it off. Um, if you open up the console, so I say inspect, um, all that this does is it, it spits out a bunch of information about what Simplify is doing. Hey, it's loading. I've you know, set up your, your preferences have been loaded. Um, this is a Gmail bug, et cetera, et cetera. So, this is mostly just for me, but sometimes if someone's having issues, I'll ask them to turn this on and go see if there's any errors or, or kind of tell me what's what they're seeing in the console. So that can be helpful. Okay, that was excessively long. That should probably be a four-part video. Um, and again, these are going to get uh, revamped and hopefully get improved where I, they're inside Gmail. Um, and so you can kind of easily play with them and, and see what they are uh, without having to toggle back and forth between the settings tab. Um, this also let me embed Simplify in other products, like there's other Gmail wrappers, um, so that'll be nice. Um, all right, but that's it. So, um, hope that was helpful.